Shadowlands is almost here, and even though things might not look as good as they appear, Paladin Dance is here to quell your fears and show you that we will persevere. Stick around and I'll show you all you want to hear about conduits, soulbinds, and how they appear. What's up guys, I'm back with another video. Thank you so much for all the support you've given me. Uh, my second video, for example, I think I hit like about 14k views or something, which is nutty. I never in my life thought I'd be getting that many views on like my first or second video ever on YouTube. I was just doing this for fun, so I appreciate you guys. But uh, some of you were requesting to see the soul binds and conduits for Prop Pally, so here I am bringing that to you. Quick disclaimer though, I'm going to be going over the Bastion Soulbinds. I'm not going to be going over all the Covenant Soulbinds. I'm just going to be showing you what the Soulbind system is like, how it works, and how the conduits fit into that, using Bastion Soulbinds as an example. Now, as many of you know, Blizz introduced this new system, which is akin to the Legion Artifact weapon system, in the sense that the Legion Artifacts kind of were like a second talent tree, and these are essentially going to be very similar to that. Now, you'll also be unlocking conduits, which slot into the soulbinds, similar to kind of the relics that we had in Legion if you played that expansion. In most cases, the conduits are actually going to give you more power than the soulbinds themselves, so you're going to be wanting to look out for those as well. But with that all out of the way, let's get right into the soulbinds. Alright guys, so this is what your soulbind tree is going to look like. It's pretty simple, it's just made up of two different parts essentially. You're going to have your Soulbind abilities, which are tied to your actual Covenant. And then you're going to have your Conduit slots, which are abilities that are separate from the Covenants and are unlocked through doing just world content. Each section of your Soulbind tree, though, is going to be unlocked at certain Renown levels. So it's tied to Renown. So at Renown 1, you're going to have your first ability. At Renown 2, you're going to have your second ability. But you don't get your third ability until you're Renown 4. So... What I'm trying to say here is that essentially the further down you go through the soulbind, the more renown it's, that's going to be required to unlock those soulbind slots. Now most of the soulbind abilities, except for maybe the capstone ones, are small buffs here or there, or they give you some kind of utility. For most classes and specs, it's not going to matter too much what actual soulbind ability you choose. However, for some classes, it actually will give them a big advantage. What will make a big difference, however, are going to be the conduits that you choose. So the conduits are going to be like the old relics for those of you that played Legion. They're going to drop from a variety of different content, but they will not take up valuable loot table space. So that's to say that, for example, in a dungeon, if you get a piece of gear, you're not going to get a conduit as that piece of gear. The conduit won't take up that piece of gear in the loot table. You're going to get your piece of gear, and in addition, you'll get your conduit. Conduits are going to have three different types. You're going to have potency, endurance, and finesse conduits. Now really though, from what I've seen, they're either going to give you more throughput, or you're just going to get some extra utility. I don't know why they really have the three different types, it's just kind of utility or throughput. Now different soulbind trees are going to have different conduit slots in them, so that might affect your soulbind tree choice because some conduits you'll no doubt want to be using. So say for example you need, I don't know, three finesse conduits available, but your soulbind only has two and you really want to use that third finesse conduit because it's really going to be something that's going to push you over the edge in your class then you might not choose a soulbind with only two slots, you're going to choose a soulbind with three finesse slots. So with that out of the way, let's get into the prop pally conduits that I think are going to be good. Alright guys, so all the conduits are going to be upgradable, and even though we are less than two months out, we actually don't know how it is that we're going to be able to upgrade them. Blizzard hasn't actually told us how it is that we're going to upgrade them. There's no system in place. We literally have no idea, so that's just a toss-up at the moment. However, when you see the white values in the actual tooltips, you now know that those values are going to increase the higher the rank of the conduit is. So that's why those numbers there are going to be white. There are going to be up to 15 conduit ranks for each of the conduits, and a lot of the conduits that you're going to be seeing are actually shared amongst all Paladin specs. So unless the conduit specifically states a uh, protection paladin ability, it's going to be a shared conduit. So looking at our first conduit here, Ringing Clarity is going to give Divine Toll. So this is a Covenant-specific conduit. 
uh, each of the covenants is going to have a specific conduit to them. And this is the one that you get for being Kirin. So this is going to give Divine Toll, which is the covenant ability you get, a 40% chance to cast an extra two times on the main target. So the tooltip is actually bugged there. It says that it's going to cast an additional 40 times, which would be actually, uh, it'd actually be just absolutely sick, but that's unfortunately not what's going to happen. What will happen is you cast Divine Toll, and the main target has a 40% chance to eat two more Avenger Shield. I don't really see myself using this one uh, because two extra Avenger Shields, although nice, you know, they're going to give you that extra shield if you take the talent for it. You're going to get that two extra holy power. And since Avenger Shield already hits, or not Avenger Shield, since Divine Toll already hits five targets, you're going to be holy power capped. So it's kind of a waste of two holy power. And I think there are much stronger options that you, as you will see. Next up is Punish the Guilty, which makes Shield of the Righteous deal 100% more damage to targets affected by Judgment. Now, this one's definitely a strong contender. I see myself probably using this one if I have enough slots, because Judgment is going to increase the damage of your next... Your judgment Baseline already increases the damage of your next Shield of the Righteous by 25% as it is. So this is just going to take it to another level. I think at max rank, this is going to increase the damage of the Shield of the Righteous by 20, 250%. So that's a substantial amount. And if you take this in combination with Crusader's Judgment, which is the talent that gives you an extra charge of Judgment, you're going to be pumping out even more uh, damage. Vengeful Shock is going to make your Avenger Shield cause your target to take 15% more holy damage for 5 seconds. So this for me is a must take. It literally makes all of your abilities do 15% more damage because all your abilities are, as you know, already holy damage. They all do holy damage, so you're essentially just going to be doing 15% extra damage for 5 seconds. Now remember, that 15% is going to scale up higher, so at the highest conduit rank, I don't know how much it's going to be, but it's going to be a huge amount of extra damage you're going to get for the, those extra 5 seconds. And since you're going to be spanning Avenger Shield all the time, you're going to be having a lot of uptime on that conduit. So I think it's going to be one of the best in slot ones for sure. Moving on to the Endurance Conduits, we're going to have Shield of Words starting us off. And what that does is that it has your Word of Glory apply and absorb shield after you use it, which lasts 15 seconds and is equal, equal to 15% of the healing done. I think this is a really good conduit because when you use your Word of Glory, you're going to be waiting till you're low HP because that's going to give you the highest amount of healing possible. So it's usually not going to completely cap you off in healing, right? Like if you have a Word of Glory and you use it, you're going to go from maybe 25 or 30% HP to around 70. So you're not going to be topped off and that shield is going to get you that, you know, that extra padding and it's going to help your healer top you off a little bit more calmly more efficiently so i'll probably be using this one for sure next up golden path makes your consecration heal ticking every single second that you stand in your consecration so as all paladins know we have 100 percent uptime on consecration which essentially makes this a dot of healing on you 24 7. now the healing amount seems to be low here but this is the first rank and from what i've seen in higher ranks, it's going to give you a good amount of healing throughput overall. So this is going to be, you know, probably one of the better ones that you can choose. Divine Call reduces Divine Shield's cooldown by 5 seconds, but can only trigger once every 30 seconds. Now, this effect is pretty nice, but I can't see myself using it unless it effectively lowers the cooldown to about 2, 2.5 two minutes, because then it would be like a must-use conduit, but as it is, it's not really that strong. Royal Decree reduces the cooldown on Guardian of the Ancient Kings by 15 seconds, bringing it down to a 4 minute and 45 second cooldown, and it makes your next Word of Glory free. Now, the effect is nice, but since you aren't really using Guardian of the Ancient Kings all the time, and I mean, even if you use Guardian of the Ancient Kings every single 5 minutes, you're just going to get a free Word of Glory. I mean, at max rank, I think it lowers the cooldown to about 30 seconds, taking it down to a four and a half minute cooldown, which is still a very long time. So every four and a half minutes, you get to use Guardian of the Ancient Kings and you get a free heal. Not really impressive. Next up, Resolute Defender is a very interesting trait. Now, I think that once we get enough haste, 
this might actually be the best conduit that protection paladins will have access to i don't know yet I, this is just a, it's just theoretical what it does is that it extends the duration of ardent defender by 20 percent at base level which is going to be almost two seconds uh ardent defender last eight seconds so it's going to be i don't know 1.8 seconds or something like that now with enough haste theoretically you can maintain ardent defender uptime for essentially 100 percent of the time which would be extremely strong you're just gonna have a defensive up 100 percent of the time now if that ever came through fruition i'm pretty sure blizzard would just nerf it into the ground right it probably wouldn't last but at max rank the duration that each shield of the righteous extends the cooldown by is 40 percent so that's gonna be like three extra seconds every time you shield of the righteous so theoretically 100 percent uptime i highly doubt it even if it happened you would probably get nerfed by blizzard but it seems to be a pretty strong conduit nonetheless now moving on to the last conduit section we have our finesse conduits and here we're going to have stalwart as a crusader which makes crusader aura reduce the fear duration on allies by 30 percent pretty much useless on there unless there's i don't know some situation where you're taking a ton of fears and i don't know even then there are a lot stronger conduits that you're probably going to want to take anyway echoing blessings makes blessing of freedom increase the target's movement speed by five percent while giving bop and sack a five percent damage reduction to the target which lingers for eight seconds after the blessing ends this is some really nice utility but to be honest this obviously looks suited for it looks a lot better suited for holy paladins than prot Next, we have Light's Barding, which increases the duration of Divine Steed by 50%, which is whatever. And the final one that we have, which isn't even on screen, gives Turn Evil a reduced cast time. So, absolute trash. I literally don't know why you'd ever take that over literally any of the other ones. But there you go, you have it as an option. So there you have it, guys. That's how the Soulbinds and the Conduits work. I would do a Soulbind build for Prop Valley, but that would just be like a whole nother video. It would take a long time. Uh, but this was just an overview on the actual Soulbind system and the conduits specifically for Prop Valley and how they work. I will leave you with this Soulbind calculator, however. I'll leave the link in the description. It's pretty nice. You can just literally just simulate exactly what abilities you'll want to take and the conduits that you can put in. So you don't even need beta to see what you're actually going to build. Keep your eyes open, I'm going to be doing a legendary overview for Protection Paladin next week. And for all you guys that actually made it this far, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you again for all the support you've been showing me, and I'll catch you in the next one.